Hey, Gen Chem 32. In this lecture, we're going to be walking through um, the syllabus. So, um, for Chem 32 this semester, you have me, Eric Ruggles. Um, you can call me Eric, you can call me Ruggles, whatever works uh, for you. Um, my office is in Innovation 333, but given the remote nature of this class, you know, basically I'm kind of in the ethereal, the cloud, um, you know, talking. Um, to you all and answering questions and things of that nature. Um, best way to get a hold of me is by email, um, ericruggles at, at evm.edu. Um, for any questions that you might have, um, concerns, etc., appointments, things of that nature, um, realize that a lot of questions can be answered in this particular document, the syllabus. Um, but as we go, that's a good way to get a hold of me. Um, you should definitely receive a response, you know, within 24 hours of, of, of sending it to me. Um, I try to be a lot better than that, but that's just a rough estimate to help it out on, on my end. Uh, office hours is kind of virtual in the sense that, you know, our class time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, from 1.10 to 2, is really going to be an office hours uh, type setup where we're going to be asking questions. Well, you um, guys and gals will be asking questions and, and me answering them as far as with concepts or specific problems. Um, we can also have specific office hour appointments, um, which we would just set up, you know, on a, a, a need basis. So if we need to discuss something privately or we need just, you know, a little bit more help, um, we can start to set up appointments with teams um, and go th from there. Um, so that's basically our virtual class time is, you know, really discussing you know, the class material. Um, and so it's going to be on your end, uh, for like really taking in the class material before we get to actual class so that we can really discuss it. So, um, for our textbook, uh, if you take it 31 recently, you should be pretty good. Um, there's not much that has changed. There are four options in buying what's required um, of you. We need to have the textbook, Chemical Structure and Properties, second edition um, by Tro. Uh, that could be a used copy. That's fine. Um, that could be an e-text. That's fine as well. That could be brand new. Um, and then also we need to have uh, Mastering Chemistry. Um, online access. So, so all of these options one through four have both of those ideas involved. So you can start with the very high end, which is number one, you know, hardcover textbook, full textbook, um, mastering for roughly three hundred dollars, and then we go down to um, the UVM bookstore, which probably has the most bang for its buck uh, at one hundred and sixty, um, with you know a loose leaf custom textbook solution manuals as well as access to mastering uh, digital access which isn't a bad option just depending on whether you like you know the physical textbook or um, the e-text um, but 120 for that or um, a used textbook version with mastering and mastering by itself is roughly $75 so um, basically the most bang for your buck is option two um, but uh, the most economical uh, is 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 really option four. I see down there that um, I have option three, but it would be kind of your choice as far as option four being really the, the cheapest and the most basic for, for your needs in the class. As we talked about in the earlier video, right, we have assignments and lecture which is corresponding to, you know, the homework assignments that I'll give on Blackboard right within announcements. We can access those through the assignments link. Um, and remember, these will be assigned before each class. And, and basically, that should give you enough time to do the video and the practice homework, attempt to practice homework. And then in class, we can then walk through um, those different components. We have questions about the video lectures. We can get we can get into that. If we have questions about specific homework problems, um, we can get into that. 
um, as well. Um, remember that those assignments contain, you know, those three options, the video lectures, um, the homework problem sets, as well as then the homework problem video examples um, to help with the process. And that's really, we talked about with the ebb and flow of class. It's really our virtual class time is where we'll be meeting, talking about questions, um, what have you. Also, um, remember there is the discussion boards um, where I will also be able to answer questions uh, for those that, that pose them. Um, as far as office hours are concerned, pretty much our virtual class time is going to be office hours. But, but I want to stress that, you know, if you want to meet outside of class, let's just set up an appointment um, and, and go from there. So, so keep in mind, you know, if you, if you need to make the appointment, just make the appointment and we'll figure it out by email so we can have, you know, more of a discussion. For extra practice, remember I posted um, a lot of old exams uh, and course materials. Um, don't rely on those old exams. Remember, we have those for extra practice. Um, recitations. Um, basically, every Wednesday evening is our exam time. And so when we're not using that exam time, I will give a you know an hour review session. This is just basically another venue, another class um, to um, get your questions answered at. Um, this is something is written into our schedule. Um, so, you know, it's up to you if you need to attend um, or not. Also, um, the Sunday before a mid-semester exam, I will also hold um, a review from 11 to 12.30 p.m. on Teams as well. So, exam coming up on that Wednesday. We'll then have a review session on Sunday um, to try to help with um, getting prepared and buffing out the rough edges for that um, upcoming exam. Throughout the semester, there'll be homework quizzes. Um, it's There's only 10 of them, and we're only accepting 10. So there are no freebies here. Um, you do not want to miss a homework quiz. These homework quizzes are going to be on Mastering Chemistry. Do not worry, I'll post announcements so that we're all aware of that. Um, and normally there's, you know, four to five days to get these assignments done. So there's plenty of time, but then there's also plenty of time to forget. So, you know, make sure that you are writing these assignments down in your day planner or whatever tool you use to make sure you're not missing out on these homework quizzes. They can be a really um, good boon to your grade. Not restricting any material here to help you out with those quizzes. Um, for each question, you have three chances to get it right. Um, you see a slight diminish in your points um, for each missed attempt. And then after the third attempt, then, then you lose the points for that question. Um, but take your time. Make sure you've done the practice homework. This is all really trying to reinforce the practice homework that we have within the assignments. So um, keep that in mind. Exams are on those Wednesdays from 6.40 to 9.40 p.m. These will be taken on Blackboard um, for, for at the discretion of the student right between that time frame. Um, no scheduled make-up dates. Obviously, if we have issues with sickness and whatnot, we need to be in contact with uh, myself as well as um, the dean to talk, to talk about accommodations. We'll get into that into a little bit. Um, there are the exams are basically um, one and a half hours long. That's the, the how long they are written for. So as far as um, accommodations, everyone is getting three hours to take the exam. So there's double time already provided for these chem chemistry exams. For access students, um, which I'll get back into at the end of the lecture here, um, the only exception to that is the final exam. Um, and we'll find that accommodations um, will be granted then. These are things that we need to talk to um, um, each other about on a student to teacher basis. 
Uh, only non-programmable, non-graphing calculators are permitted, right? No other electronic devices are allowed when taking exams. And we'll find that there are ways to kind of track how students are, are working here. So please stay within the confines of being, you know, honest and open with your quiz and exam assessments. Here are the exam dates. As well as the last day of withdrawal. Unfortunately, the final exam dates haven't been specified yet from the registrar, so that's still something that needs to be um, added to the syllabus. As far as our lab goes, um, things are pretty much straightforward from what we had for 31. You can still get our lab manuals on, on the Blackboard website for, for, for the uh, lab portion of 32. Um, our lab notebook, we need that carbonless copy notebook. Uh, safety eyewear, we should have goggles or glasses. Um, remember, uh, contact lenses are, are potential problems. So we need to have, um, you know, glasses or, or goggles. Really, goggles would be the better way to go um, in, those, in those instances. Um, something new would be the COVID masks. We need to have um, COVID masks on as well. So both of these items, safety eyewear and COVID, if you're caught, you know, not wearing these items, uh, remember the TA has the ability to send you home and you receive a zero uh, for the experiment. So um, it says warnings will not be given. Our TAs are pretty good. Um, this is something we really need to take um, important uh, steps towards. Uh, and so remember that green and gold promise and, and, and be safe. Uh, as far as lab attire, we need to dress appropriately. Um, remember, we have to have pants and short sleeves, at least. Um, we have no shorts or capris. Um, we need to have full shoes being worn as well. Um, and again, that's another reason for a TA um, giving you a zero and asking you to leave the lab is for not wearing the proper um, lab attire. Prior to start of the lab, we need to have all these items in place. Um, we may have already completed the safety quiz and, and presentation, and um, but that'll become apparent once the lab uh, begins. Attendance, just like with uh, 31, um, you can only miss two labs, uh, whether it be excused or unexcused. Um, and so we need you to attend eight of those 10 experiments. Obviously, with the COVID era, things might be a little bit different. Um, this is just something that we've had in the past. And so this rule might have a slight bend to it. Um, but for right now, that is, is how we're going to proceed, that, that still two absences um, constitutes enough. If you have an unexcused absence, that means you have a zero for the lab. If you have an excused absence, well, that means that you don't get a zero for the lab and your grade is based off of just the experiments that you've done. Lab videos um, to try to then um, get some insight into the lab experiment that you'll actually be doing that particular day. So getting to grades, um, this is a four credit class. So we have three credits of lecture and one credit of a lab. So that means we have out of a thousand points, we have a 750 or 75% of the points for the lecture. Um, and that is broken down into a couple of different components. That means we also have 250 points or 25% towards the lab of the portion of the course. So we have three mid-semester exams at 125. We have 10 homework assignments at 125 points. And then finally, our final exam at 250. It's very similar to what we had in 31. And we're doing the same process here of of allowing your final exam to um, replace your lowest mid-semester exam. So 
as as we you know go out throughout the semester we often find that there's definitely a low exam for students right they might be sick they might be under the weather they might have got hit with three exams in a paper and they're just not up to par and so if your final exam is higher than your lowest mid-semester exam then the final exam will replace it so if we look at example one we see with example one student was doing good with an 85 percent well, then something happened and they got a 45 percent for exam two F exam three they came back to a 78 and then on the final they had a 75 percent so that was their actual scores but their counted scores notice that we have a swap notice that the final now counted twice at the final exam which was a 75, it was higher than exam two, which was a 45. So now the final exam counts twice. Still counts as the final, but now replaces exam two, that lowest mid-semester exam. For example two, this particular student really just had kind of a constant theme with a 70, a 78, a 76. And then notice that the final is a 68. Well, the final is the lowest of those scores, so it doesn't do any replacement. It just counts as the final. So this is only a method to try to help the student, you know, with a particular um, exam that they had some issues with. So if we do find trouble throughout the semester, realize that our final can bring us back. We also have a homework grade that's associated with this um, as well. For lab, you'll get a lot more specifics in the lab syllabus portion um, on uh, Blackboard, and that's going to be through a, a different site. Um, but your lab is 25% of the grade, or 250 points, and that's broken down into quizzes, pre lab reports, lab reports. Um, etc. And like I say, you get more information in the laboratory uh, portion of the course. And then as far as our course grade determination, um, we just add up the points and, and divide by a thousand. Um, since this is a collective course, uh, meaning that we're writing the same exams, common exams for all the sections, common homework, common quizzes, um, etc., etc. Um, that we wait till the end to kind of formulate the grades uh, together. Um, you know, roughly a 79, you're probably looking in that C plus B minus area, you know, while the 73 is, is more in that, you know, that, that C, C minus area. So um, just as a, as, a rough, as a rough estimate. Academic integrity, don't cheat. If you get caught cheating, we will be put... So putting you in front of the academic community. Um, don't make us a bad guy. Um, be responsible. Work hard. And, um, and reap the rewards of working hard with good scores. Here's our lecture. This is a tentative lecture. And this is going week by week. So we have our first week. We're talking about the syllabus and chapter 13. And, and here are all the problems as well. So... Um, from the left, we have the dates. In the middle, the chapters are things that we're talking about. And on the far right, our homework problems. And so um, here are all the homework problems I will assign throughout the entire semester. As we go through the class, I will break these down into smaller segments in our announcements that we will get after each class as far as, you know, what we're learning next and what homework we need to be doing next um, but if we want to work ahead or see what's coming our way um, all the problems are actually listed uh, here as well as holidays such as Labor Day or the last day to add drop first exam is on the 23rd right and so we just kind of go through the semester uh, with that uh, October 29th we have our last day to withdraw from the course Notice that we would have two exams um, done before that last data withdrawal. 
So, so that's um, hopefully giving us some good insight as to whether we should stay in the course or, or maybe um, withdraw from the course. I do post academic alerts um, to try to make students aware that, that I know things aren't going as well for them and to offer help in that process. Um, so, so keep in mind that if you're getting an academic alert, it's really an open invitation to come talk to me and, and, and figure out new perspectives on how to approach the actual coursework to do better. Um, the sooner that you do that, I think, I think the better. Um, but after the, the, after the 29th, we can't withdraw anymore from the course. So before that date, right, um, it's good to kind of, you know, in, look at ourselves and say, okay, how are we doing in Chem 32? And, and I'm good to go. Or, you know, do I want to talk to Ruggles or, you know, or maybe I just want to, you know, I took on too much and I need to cut things loose to, to make it easier at this point. So it, my, you know, GPA doesn't suffer. And, and I can talk to everyone about those, those, those issues. We then keep going to exam three and then Thanksgiving and then our final, our finals haven't been set yet. So obviously that's where the red is involved. Once those get set, I will update um, the syllabus. We also have the laboratory schedule um, for the in-group labs um, to do social distancing. We split the labs in half. So you're gonna have for each lab section, uh, uh, an A and a B. Um, that's gonna help with social distancing within the lab and, and help flow. Um, so we have a lab A and a lab B that will be told to you once we get into the, the lab portion of, of the course. Um, realize that labs don't start for two weeks um, and that you will also have a, you know, a separate Blackboard site for the lab portion. So that's where you'll get that information. But what we're going to have is basically an in-person lab um, portion and an online lab portion. So if we go down to the 14th of September, we have lab A being in-person, lab B being online. But then if we go to the next week, the 21st, we see that lab A is now online and lab B is in person. So we're kind of flip-flopping to get that you know in-person contact as well as then just make sure we get all of that information. And so this is in a general format presented here. Your lab syllabus will be much more detailed um, than we see. There is also completely online And those that are completely online, here is the schedule um, following the, the A, B groups. And so same idea, just um, that your experiments are actually all online as opposed to not. Finally, we have uh, accommodations, um, access accommodations. If you're an access student, um, please don't hesitate to get a, a, in contact with me. Um, while Access does contact me, um, as far as you know, making me aware of some possible accommodations, it's really up to the student and, and myself to really figure out what's required um, for this course. So if you have Access accommodations, please um, shoot me an email so we can discuss that. Um, realize that um, Time accommodations are common, um, but given the nature of how these exams are written, as far as our hour and a half time frame within a three hour block, that all time accommodations are met for everybody uh, across the board. So, but we can talk about other accommodations as well. Uh, so please um, get a hold of me if um, we're seeking access accommodations religious holidays um you know i'm i'm lutheran so i'm up to speed with that uh i celebrate festivus so i'm okay with that but i don't know all the religious holidays so um if you 
um, are a practicing person, um, please make me aware if there is a conflict. All right. So uh, most of these religious dates are, are on a calendar and set. And so there should be plenty of opportunity to let me know that there's going to be an issue. And then we can have a simple work around um, that issue. So please let me know. But also, please give me enough time to make the accommodation. Don't come at me the day of the exam. Right? We should we should have a sense of when these are happening, because we are practicing of a religious faith. Illness accommodations. Um, we got two issues here, right? We got COVID, of course, and then just being sick. Um, first off, you're being sick, right? We have the green and gold promise that you need to go get checked out to see if it's actually COVID. Um, and so that would be probably the first and foremost thing to actually do. Realize that you're putting everyone else in jeopardy. If you kind of if you skip that step, right? If you show up for a lab with eleven people in that lab, and then later that day you test positive for COVID, now all those eleven people could be then quarantined as well. So you're impacting other people's lives as a result. So when in doubt, just go get tested, right? Um, stay down. Um, we'll have plenty of ways to kind of make up points as we go throughout. The semester <coughs> if you are truly sick in terms of covid as well as maybe something else well then those things will get worked through um the dean's office and letting us know um from the dean that okay things are have gone astray and and that you need um special accommodation so so make sure uh you do those proper steps that is a syllabus for 32.